G'day guys, I'm going to set fire to a tennis ball, throw it in the air and take a photograph of it. If you want to see how that turns out, stick around. The way I want this end image to look like is a tennis ball on fire flying through the air about to land in here. Now obviously it's going to be a composite image because to take that image would be near impossible as well as extremely dangerous. Talking about danger, I have some safety precautions around me. For example, this. That's right, one of these. Uh, these are like this silicone um, heat proof oven glove, or what I like to call them, lobster claws. I'm gonna drop the tennis ball with this after I set fire to it. I also have a bucket of water. I have a hose ready to go, it is turned on. Good to drench any chaos. I'm gonna drop the ball into here, and I do not think it's actually going to bounce out. Finally, we have the fire blanket, in case anything goes completely crazy. My camera is set up just here, and I have a big light here, as you can see, which I'm going to turn up in a minute. It's going to be ridiculously bright. I have some stairs here that I'm going to stand on and drop the tennis ball right here into this. So I'm going to go up there, going to drop the tennis ball from a bit higher than that, Hopefully it bounces and stays in the tub of containment. Now taking the photo is the real challenge. I want an image of a ball falling by itself through the air with a fire trail behind it. We're gonna shoot at a really high shutter speed. I'm thinking a 5,000th of a second. Light shouldn't be a problem because the tennis ball will be on fire, but focus might be an issue. So in a moment, I'm going to put the ball here, create the depth of field that's going to be adequate for all of the ball to be in focus. It's likely that it'll be a 7 or 9 aperture. I'm then going to play with the tennis ball because I really don't want to do this too many times. I like just like a drop and boom, we've got the shot. Now, Lindell went out and said, are you going to be all right? And I said, I shouldn't set fire to myself. I think I'm going to be okay. But in case I'm not here when you get back, that's where I am. I've gone to the hospital. To which she said, well, if that happens, can you drop the kids at a friend's place on the way just so they're okay? I know, right? So what am I going to work with? <laughs> all right, should we begin? So we're all ready to go. I've got my focus. All, all sweet with the camera. Put a chalk line so I can replace the bin exactly where it should be each time and I can drop this bang on the target point. And I've just realized you can't do a 10 second shutter delay and then fire. So I'm gonna need to just go to a high, um, a very high shutter speed put the setting, a really high shutter, um, what's that called? Like frames per second, but it's not film. I'm gonna put it on high, on high. Um, gosh, I wish I would remember what that's called. Hang on, I'm gonna Google it. I don't even know what to Google. Shutter release, high speed, speed shutter release. I think it's just called high speed shutter release. <laughs> So I need to, I'm going to climb up the ladder, I'm going to have the tennis ball, I'm going to put lighter fluid on it, there's going to be a candle, I'm going to set fire to it, I'm going to press go on the camera, I'm just going to really quickly drop it, and we'll see if we have any luck. This light is a little bit closer than I'd like it to be, so I might move it back a little bit, uh, but it needs to be this close to pick up the tennis ball. But when the tennis ball's on fire, it should be fine. Let's do this, hey? Decided I'm going to start with the test run on the tennis ball to see if all the elements are working together and to see how it feels to drop it from up there. The lobster glove. <laughs> Nailed it. Settings I'm going with are 
as follows, just here. Five foot, one five thousandth of a second, 5.6 aperture and 640 ISO. It's on a 24 mil full frame. All right, let's go. Here's my bucket of water. Here's the hose. All right, let's do this. Gloves will work in a treat. Your brain has to function on a few levels at once. If you're like, fire, don't burn me, aim it up, oh, take a photo. And then I was wrong handed. I might. There we go. Let's try that. It's been raining, so thankfully, uh, nice. still intact. Should we see what happened? I'm going to slow down my shutter speed to let more light in. I'm going to put it at 3200 and then I'm going to go to 4.5 and I'm going to move the light closer. I think we've seen that it wouldn't bounce up into this. All right so I've changed my settings there just here. I've moved the light closer. I want to get more light into the camera because you can't really see the tennis ball. You can see the plumage of flames but not the actual tennis ball and that's kind of the subject. And I'll be able to bring a little bit of that out of it in post. But the idea with photography is you take the very best in-camera shot you can. And editing enhances that as opposed to compensating for that. I think my old tennis ball actually still might, um, might go alright. Let's have a look. You can see the carnage. Total carnage. It's actually cooled down. It's not really um, a little bit of green there. But I think we need, I think we need to go with another tennis ball. What do you think? Let's do it. Still not quite happy with the shots, but I don't need the stool. So I'll move the stool out of the way, which will help things tremendously. But I still need to drop it from up here. We kick on. I've still, I've only half burnt the tennis ball. We've still got the other half to, to chew up. There might be one there that's that's good enough. I feel like I need to increase the shutter speed one stop. I need to make sure I drop it, I bang on center. Because as you saw, I get a little bit excited when things go a bit crazy. And I think I need to do it with a nice clean green tennis ball. Number three, let's go. Decided I'm gonna move this a little bit closer to you and I'm gonna put my light full strength there, which will help can actually get it to stand up. Matches, how many uses do matches have? Oh. fingers have just got two like uh, claws holy dooly do not try this at home it's pretty obvious right but creativity requires pushing the limits and sometimes those limits are risk but we need to do it with safety precautions but do it nonetheless well I've just checked the shot and I think I've got it 
there's this there's this shot where as the ball falls you can see it's a yellow green tennis ball and there's sort of some fire underneath it but this big plume of fire at the back so we will have a play around with that the final thing I need to do is take an image of the tennis ball tube and that way I can put them together in Photoshop by simply cutting out the tennis ball moving to an angle and in she goes. Did you know I bought these tennis balls for a dollar? Four tennis balls, Slazenger in this, for a dollar from an op shop. Ha! Winning, right? Let's get this photo right. I think that's about there. The final settings shot on that are just here. One of the challenges is lighting the tennis ball so you can see it clearly. I thought initially that the fire would light it but the fire was always kind of behind it so you didn't necessarily see the ball looking like it was glowing but needing this light and this light really helped illuminate the ball so you could see it was a ball and what was happening to it which was essential because photography is about telling a story and you can do that in an image and I hope this image that you'll get to see in just a few minutes tells a story that's exciting and fun and curious and intriguing because I think all those things lead us to a greater expression and experience of beauty in this world and we all need more beauty in our lives don't we so thanks for watching guys really appreciate it uh, if you'd like to subscribe I'd really really appreciate that um, if you enjoyed this video you thought that was good just give it a thumbs up and I'm gonna see you in the next video